Thank you so much. Wonderful to see you again. Great to be here. Uh, Mayor Freeman Wilson has many, many distinctions, which I'll just mention uh, tersely. Former Attorney General of the state of Indiana, first, um, f your first female mayor of Gary, second African American mayor of Gary, is, is that right? But also, on this day, it is her birthday. So I think we all would like <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Jim. <laughs> to say happy birthday to Mayor Freeman Wilson as she turns 35. It's a yeah, wonderful day for her. It's great to celebrate <laughs> my 35th birthday yes. with all of you. <laughs> so I'd like to, the, one of the framing events for our discussion on public art, of course, has been the controversy in the United States about Confederate memorials. I don't think you have any, have any Confederate memorials in the city of Gary, but certainly, uh, are there we some do, in Gary? We do not, uh, um, but we do have, or we have had controversy around the naming of a library uh, for someone who historically was a racist, um, had some racist views. Obviously, that wasn't the reason that the library was named, but as research was done, they learned this about him, and we changed the name. Yeah. And we did it as a part of a very uh, public discourse, a public debate, but ultimately, the decision was made to make the change. Right. And as you've seen events in the rest of the country, the way in which this Confederate historical material has been in some places removed, some places it's been very, con very controversial. What's been your perspective about the way other, the way the United States in general has handled this issue, whether it's Charlottesville or New Orleans with Mayor Landrieu's famous speech? How do you think the process is going? Well, I, I think that when there is an effort to view these things from everyone's perspective, yeah and to discuss it publicly, and to give everyone involved an opportunity yeah. to share his or hers concern, it um, goes fairly well. I mean, I think that Charlottesville, in many instances, because of the outside influences, yeah. was uh, a tremendous, not only tragedy, but yeah. aberration, because internally, the city had handled it in a way where they were working through it. It wasn't until people came from the outside. And so if you look at Mayor Landrieu yeah. in New Orleans, who really said, let's look at this from the perspective of everyone involved. Yes, there are some folks who want to celebrate or certainly want to acknowledge the contributions of uh, Robert Lee and, and others uh, in the past. But there are some folks who are damaged, and yeah. what we are not acknowledging is the tremendous, uh, the connection with slavery yeah. and, and the tremendous pain that this represents to other New Orleanians. And yeah. so to the extent that that is true, we have to do something about this uh, that really does speak to all aspects of that. So talk, if you would, for, for a little bit about the actual historical properties of Gary itself, what, ranging from the Jackson family to the Civil Rights Hall of Fame and the ways in which you have engaged your public in trying to deal with these aspects of its history. Well, Gary is a legacy city. Yeah. And uh, to many people, that means many things. To me, it means that Gary was a city that gave tremendously to the state of Indiana, yeah. to the United States, because of our relationship, our history, with steel, specifically U.S. steel. That relationship still exists, but not to the magnitude that it has historically. U.S. steel at one point employed 25,000 people in the city of Gary. Mm. Now it employs 4,000 people. And so this legacy left um, a lot of gaps, a lot of um, holes, if you will, in the city of Gary. We went from having 200,000 people to now 80,000 people. Wow. And, you know, the reduction in population also had an accompanying vacancy, abandonment, an increase in our poverty rate, an increase in our unemployment rate. But the great news about Gary is that with that legacy has come uh, a resilient yeah. people, a resilient city. And, you know, I often refer to Gary as a legacy city, but the great news about Gary is that we have legacy residents who have stood with the city and who have really stood the test of time. And so to 
a company that changed that we've seen in the city, we've attempted to really work on the image of mm -hmm. the community. In fact, I was talking to a reporter last week. He said, well, you know, you have to acknowledge that Gary has been a punchline. And I said, yeah, we have. I acknowledge that, but we've changed that. And one of the ways that we've changed it very much in part, thanks to Bloomberg Philanthropies, mm -hmm. is through public art. Yeah. And uh, through public art, through our connection with the Jackson family, mm -hmm. specifically Michael Jackson, and uh, through our effort to really highlight so much of the good things about Gary. And so uh, tell us about how you've worked through the mixed legacy of Michael Jackson himself. How, how do you commemorate the varied parts of his, uh, his reputation now? Well, you know, the thing about Gary is that we knew Michael Jackson as a little boy. Uh, he came back, um, well, he came back for a concert when he was about 10, mm -hmm. and then he came back again uh, shortly before his passing, maybe three or four years before his passing. And so we remember the Jackson 5 right. Michael Jackson. And while, you know, we were very um, much fans mm -hmm. of Michael Jackson, the king of pop, he, his relationship with the mm -hmm. city was different. And I think the way that we have treated Michael Jackson really is instructive to the way we can treat so many parts of our history that have uh, mixed, right. mixed a aspects. Um, we acknowledge Michael Jackson as the king of pop. We <laughs> acknowledge his great entertainment, his humanitarianism. But at the same time, there were some challenges yeah. that he had, and uh, we acknowledge that. And I think that when you acknowledge the entire story, mm -hmm. because that's really what it is, we all have a whole story to tell about ourselves, about our cities, about the things right. that we love, and even in loving those things, you have to acknowledge that no one, no thing is perfect. Right. You have to acknowledge flaws and all. I'm going to ask you about two implications of the Gary story that have ramifications across the United States right now and, and across the world too. A big theme of this conference has been mayors taking the lead for things that national governments are, are, are not doing. And I want to ask you about two ways that works in Gary. One is you said that Gary has been sort of a, it had been a legacy city, even a butt of a joke someplace. You and I have discussed before that in many cities, that sense of being looked down on can be a motivating force. I've seen that in Mississippi. I've seen it in Central Valley, California. How have you used the idea of Gary being looked down on as a motivator for your citizens? Well, it has motivated us to punch above our weight. Yeah. It has motivated us to say, you know, this is what you think about us. Yeah. This is what you've heard. But here's the truth. This is what we're really about. These are the things that we represent. Our citizens are not only artistic, but they are also uh, very cerebral. We produce Nobel Peace Prize winners in economics and in other areas in physics. At the same time, we um, acknowledge that legacy because there were some elements of truth to that, but we say, that we have transcended that and we are so different than what you believe in. And the best way that we suggest to people is, you know, come and see us, yeah. come and see us. You know, some people come to Gary, they don't even know that there's a beach. You know, Lake, Michigan, beach yeah, yeah. Lake Michigan has many sides and one of those sides is on, in Gary, Indiana. The other aspect with national implications is, as you well know, in national politics, it's been a time of, in the U.S., a time of increased division, especially on racial and cultural lines. Some mayors have said that's the impetus for new inclusiveness at the local level, new efforts to, um, to, to heal these wounds that are being sort of inflamed at the national level. What's been your experience in Gary? How has the city has responded to this national tone? Well, we have become more inclusive, more yeah. welcoming. In fact, Gary is a welcoming city. Mm -hmm. And we've done that in the last year, passed legislation, or at least our city council did, uh, passed an ordinance, because we want people to know that we have a history as a melting pot. Yeah. 
people coming from all areas of Europe, people coming from the south, uh, migrating from the southern part of the United States, people coming from Mexico and, and so many other areas to work in the steel mills. And because of that history, we were able to exist and to thrive and to grow and build a city together. So now the discourse that you see at the national level we have to as city leaders and as members as citizens of cities say that's not us mm -hmm. that is really not what this country is about this country is about tolerance this country is about love this country is about embracing what is best in all of us and improving those things that need improving are you finding mayors in general, as you meet them, have that same outlook? Are they generally saying, we want to stand for those values in the U.S., or are many of them uh, sort of modeling the national tone? No, I think that mayors understand yeah. how important it is to really lift up the best of everyone and to highlight the best of everyone. So I'm going to give you, as our, our final question, an opportunity to extend what the previous panel was saying. I was asking each of these three figures in the arts to give a lesson from their experience in public engagement for other mayors, other artistic uh, leaders in the room. If you were offering advice to your fellow mayors or to other people who are dealing with difficult parts of their civic history and trying to engage their citizenry in the right way, what's the lesson of your experience you would like to share here in Paris? My experience and what I love about the opportunity that we've had in Gary is the ability to redefine our city through civic engagement, through public art, uh, through um, really just offering an opportunity to look at our city through another lens. We have a beautiful mur mural, uh, actually two murals, of the Jackson Five. You know, the art house installation, it's not only a piece of public art, but it's a culinary incubator. So now we have people providing food throughout the city who have not been able to do that before, testing their skills as restauranteurs. And so through civic engagement, you have the opportunity to allow citizens to explore their dreams and really to reach their greatest possibilities. So I would like you all to join me before you applaud. I would like you on the count of three, not to sing, but just to join me in saying happy birthday to Mayor Freeman Wilson. One, two, three, happy birthday. Thank you so <laughs> and much. And now you may applaud. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.